All right, well, we're here at 2024 King of the Hammers with uh, Matt McAdam, and what we want to do is show you around his Bronco Raptor. You know, there's not a lot of these things out there, and uh, a lot of people don't understand what makes them stand out over a regular Bronco, so Matt's going to show us uh, around his Bronco. Yeah, thanks, Trevor. So this is a 2022 Ford Bronco Raptor. It is the first year of the Bronco Raptor, and uh, this thing overall is pretty stock with the exception of the 37 inch Nitto tires and the KMC wheels. It does come with 37 inch BFG, so I haven't changed the Which size. Which I, I didn't realize it actually comes with 37s, stock. like the Raptor R truck. Yeah, so yeah. it comes, every, every Raptor Bronco comes stock with 37s. These are a true to size 37 inch Nitto. The KMC wheels have been changed out, obviously. These are but factory. But they're zero offset wheels. They're zero right? offset, they're a little bit wider. So, the, the Bronco's yeah. so wide already, you don't want to have any, you know, offset. Exactly, yeah. Yep. So this is the... Oop, don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, we're at KOH, it's loud out here. <laughs> Uh, these are the Ford Performance carbon fiber fenders, tailgate piece, and the hood. I'll show you guys that and in a little bit. Eventually, these will be available through Ford Performance. Correct. Yeah, these yeah. will be just an, an upgrade from Ford. But it comes with a fender similar to this in width. They're identical. Out. They look the same. Oh, they are identical. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's just that it's carbon fiber. Exactly. And then, you know, one of the the pet peeves of the Broncos is the soft tops are kind of annoying. They crinkle. They're not user friendly. Uh, you mentioned that the Bronco Raptors all come with a hard top. Yes, they do. They don't have soft tops on the Bronco Raptor. The uh, hard tops come factory. They're okay for what they are. I think that they're fine. I actually like a two-piece hard top rather than three-piece. And but... there's the new aftermarket one coming out. Yes. Um, that I think is actually going to be one-piece, isn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, there's yeah. a couple fiberglass options that are coming out too. So show us so. what you got on the back here. Yeah, so the rear is stock bumper, uh, stock tire carrier. What I do have in here is, you can't really see it very well from the outside, but so there's So right a, here is, the, is a chuck for the ARB, yeah, right? Yeah, there's an ARB twin compressor in there. It's from AGS, that's the mount. It actually goes behind the tire carrier itself. That's, I mean, I don't even think I've seen a Jeep come with that. That's a great accessory to yeah. have the ARB compressor up high, out of water, out of dirt and mud, and right here. Exactly, yeah, and really easy to get to. There was another benefit of this too, right? The air cleaners or the, the air intake for the ARB compressor, where's that? They go through the tailgate and they actually pull air from the interior the cabin we, that is a, that is pretty cool because yeah. i mean your compressor is only going to last as long as the junk air that you suck through it and if exactly. it's muddy or wet or whatever so that's uh open this up you can kind of peek it goes through here right down right in there, there you, you can, can see, see it here. see the compressor down in there and then that brings us to what you got in the back of this thing yeah so this is the uh, cargo drawer that Ford will sell you, but it's made by Tuffy, which is a great brand. A lot of us says Bronco stuff. on it. It's all Bronco your tools branded. in there. I've got all my tools. I got probably enough tools to rebuild a whole car in here, but uh, there's electronic diagnostic stuff. I have a Milwaukee impact gun in there. I have, uh, you know, the Bronco tool bag that's got all the Bronco hardware stuff in there. The top off and stuff, yeah. Yeah, all that stuff is all in there. It's ready to go. Power tank, jack. Uh, fridge. 41 quart fridge, yeah. Now, what's this piece here you were showing us? This is the uh, the brace that you only get with the Bronco Raptor, and there's actually another one on the B-pillar as well. And those only come on the Bronco Raptor because they noticed there was a lot more chassis flex with those live valve shocks, putting all that compression through the body. That They actually wanted to stiffen it up overall, and it made a big difference for how it drove. Okay. So they, they added those on. It was actually after I found out. They added those on after they were doing all the testing and it really stiffened up the chassis of the Bronco without just having two independent rails going back. Now they're actually cross braced in a few locations. And that leads us into the to the other uh, different thing on this. Rear suspension is linked. It's a rear um, four link, yep. Yep, and live valve shocks on this thing. 3.1 inch diameter Fox live valves with uh, bypass zone. There's 11 bypass zones on those shocks. Coilovers on all four corners. Uh, and it's all hooked into a computer that kind of basically just changes things on the fly it's pretty incredible how it works and it'll it, on the outside sweep and turn it'll stiff the sh stiffen up the shock rates yeah same with um, the front and rear hits it'll stiffen up the rear as soon as the front feels real heavy and that's what really makes it shine you know above a regular bronco correct yeah it's um, a big big difference so as we move forward uh anything specific to the bronco raptor you mentioned um I believe that these fenders are not the same as a regular Bronco. Correct. Yeah, the front and rear fenders are actually a little bit wider. I'm talking about the metal part here. Like right here, it yeah. just bubbles out a little bit. The, the regular Broncos will just kind of dive straight down from this trail site and they go straight down. 
but on the Raptor, it's actually a little bit bulged out. And then, of course, you have this additional fender flare there, With too. With the front and the rear. Yeah, yeah. And these fenders do unbolt pretty, pretty easy, the back ones and the front ones. Same, yeah. Yep. They do come mm -hmm. off pretty easy if you want to go for an aftermarket version. But the nice thing is that you're still not wider than your mirrors, so you kind gotcha. of know where the outsides of your car yep. are. Uh, it's a factory modular front bumper on this. Now, one of the things that makes the Bronco Ra Raptor the Bronco Raptor it's not just wider from offset rims, because you got zero offset, right. it actually has different control arms, correct? correct? yeah, it's actually 10 inches wider overall okay. than, uh, than a regular Bronco. With the same tires it would be on a regular Bronco. Right. So that's five inches per side yeah. of extra suspension length, yep. which the longer you go, the more travel, right? Yep. It's got the Ford Performance steering rack while we're talking about stuff underneath it. Yeah. Obviously the, the front bumper has the skid plate on there too. This and that's is, specific to the Raptor? Yeah, this is specific to the, it looks very similar. I think they're actually pretty much the same, but uh. they painted this one gray instead of black. So. And the hood's different on the Raptor. The hood is different. It's got a, a vent system that's Basically, actually pretty unique. This stuff um, right up here, yeah. That vent up there actually is, is made to let air escape, but not let water in. So gotcha. it's actually engineered that way okay. by Ford. Now I've gone and done some aftermarket stuff to this. Uh, it's got a Project X uh, light bar here with three HP 85s. Those are 22,000 lumens each. Yeah. Um, bolts right onto the factory modular bumper, which makes it very easy to install. Uh, and then I have the six FF 70s on the roof and that's the Project X bracket as well, all bolts on. Uh, and I got some A-pillar brackets that we built too over there. It's a radio on there too. So. And then you want to pop the hood on this thing? Let's yeah. look what the engine is in this. So being that it's the Raptor, it has more horsepower, right? That's right. So yeah. is this the three liter? This is the 3.0 twin turbo EcoBoost and uh, it comes factory rated at 418 horsepower. Uh, I think 465 torque is uh -huh. the number on that. Uh, I did go ahead and add a couple of things. I did the Whipple uh, intercooler, which is a lot bigger than the factory intercooler. It's made from, uh, I think, a different material too. So it, it flows more air through it. And then you kind of add that in line with the Whipple tune, which is a 91 octane tune, because this will take 87 at the okay. factory tune. So that's another benefit on the Jeep. Oh, the 392 yeah. is, is uh, 91, 91 only. only. Yeah, yep, on this yep. one, you can actually take 87 on it stock. Okay, so yep. now that I've modified the tune, it doesn't take 87 anymore. But uh, with the 91 tune, it does add about 50 horsepower with that intercooler. And now, well. just if people are wondering, the standard Bronco, does it still have twin turbos or just single turbo? It's a twin 2.7. Okay. So yeah, yep. the uh, the inline four obviously is a single turbo. But okay. Yeah, the 2.7 has two turbos. They're smaller, I believe. And you can't get the 3.0 on a regular Bronco. You cannot. The okay. only the only vehicle that the 3.0 twin turbo comes in is the Bronco Raptor. There is a, a different version of it that goes into the newer uh, Explorer ST. So okay. That's another vehicle yep. that has that too. And then. Uh, You've put some uh, switching stuff in here, correct? Yeah, this is the Project X Ghost Box, basically. For what familiar. you notice is there's antennas, right? That's right, yeah, they, they run wirelessly. Uh, it's If you're familiar with S-Pod or Switch Pros, kind of the same goal, except you're not wiring everything to a central hub. You kind of have these satellites all around the vehicle, okay. and they're all monitored and, and ran through a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection, so uh -huh. it's actually not Bluetooth. Uh, you don't have to worry about your friends hitting your locker on the freeway by accident. Gotcha. So yeah. it's all encrypted Wi-Fi and they have a range of 100 feet. So I got them running all the accessories around this vehicle. Uh, pretty cool little system that, that Project X is doing for the ghost box there. Um, pretty much stock under the hood though, otherwise like I don't even have an intake filter or anything on here. So this is a four-door, they only make it in the four-doors, right? Correct, yeah, the Bronco Raptor only comes in a four-door. Uh, this is the pretty base interior package that you can get with the Bronco Raptor. They do have upgrades like carbon fiber upgrade. They have the red seat belts. They have the uh, cooled seats, but I went ahead and got the basic package because I didn't need any of that stuff really. And uh, I really wanted the marine grade vinyl seats so that I can get them wet without worrying about, you know, any issues happening with water getting in that the perforation for those cooled seats. The so they do interior have- interior is fairly similar to the Jeeps as well. Very, right? yeah. You got a big flat dashboard. You got a nice big size head unit on there with CarPlay. I notice you have paddle shifters over there. It does have paddle shifters. I will say- Do you actually it, use that? Cause in the 392, they, they really are kind of annoying. They're useless on a, on this vehicle too. And I'll tell you why it's a 10 speed. Yeah. You're constantly yeah. just You can't doing, keep up. I no. can't even keep up in the eight speed in the 392. Yeah. And this this 10 speed transmission from Ford is so fast that I don't need to shift on the fly. And where are your locker buttons in this thing? Because it does have front and rear lockers. Yeah, correct? so there's the whole off road suite stuff up here. You have your sway bar disconnect here on the left. Right next to it is the front locker. Next to that's the rear locker button. 
next to that rear locker is the trail turn assist and that's something that jeeps i don't believe they have that they do not have that no it grabs the brake on the inside wheel when you're going around a real tight turn in four low and it will actually kind of pivot you almost like a tank turn around that turn so if you're imagine you're going down a really really tight narrow uh switchback like let's say you're on black bear pass that's a great option to have because it will actually just pivot the whole vehicle around that back tire that's on the inside of that turn. Have you ever used that or is that a gimmick? It's a little gimmicky. I have <laughs> used it a few times to get in and out of tight parking spaces like here in Chocolate Thunder. Mm -hmm. That's where it actually helps but if you don't know how to use it you will break your vehicle because Ford is actually uh, <laughs> running into issues me. where they're having to replace rear axles under warranty because guys are engaging that on the street and they're snapping their axle tubes. So the rosette welds on the axle tubes on the rear are actually breaking and, and they're not fixing all that stuff. So yeah, you gotta use it in dirt obviously. And I don't really use mine much, but that's there. You do have all the uh, factory goat modes here on the dial. Uh, you've got four low, four high, obviously two high, and then four A, which is four wheel drive automatic. And that will actually shift you in and out of four high uh, to two high, depending on the slip that you get from the wheel. So if you're driving around on some snowy roads or icy roads, you don't want to keep flipping back and forth on your transfer case. Four automatic is a good option there for you to be able to just do that without that's, worrying that's about That's really it. cool. That's something that the Jeep doesn't have. Yeah, yeah, the Jeep doesn't. You, I mean, if you have all-wheel drive like yours, it's always engaged, but if you have a selectable transfer case, that's a nice option. It kind of almost feels like an all-wheel drive. Uh, the button in the middle there is uh, is to is to keep your, your trail pace going, whatever you're doing. So if you're going across some bumpy little like river rock, you press that button and it'll just keep that pace, almost like cruise control for four low. It's kind of interesting. I don't use it very often, but but it is there. Uh, cool option if, you, if you're if you kind of new to off-road and you're not, you're kind of jerky on the throttle, that's a good way to keep your pace going pretty smoothly. Uh, there's also six upfitter switches here, which I don't really use very many of them. I just have one of them for the fog lights up front, but majority of my accessories are run here on the ghost box control panel. And then I've I got- I noticed you have a radio mounted in here. Yeah, I've got a uh, Yaesu FT2890R. 20, uh, that's a 110 watt radio. And uh, I have a ham license. So I've, I've been ham licensed for 10 years and I use it just on the trail or just messing around with people and stuff. And, and really a cool thing that I love too is this mob armor mount. That's a wireless mag mount and it actually wirelessly charges and, and hooks up to the Bluetooth. So it's got a good little spot there to grab onto. And, so it's uh, not overly accessorized inside. No. A lot of people over accessorize. Yeah. Um, but being that it's the, the Bronco Raptor, a lot of it's built in already. Yeah, and my ethos really is to keep vehicles quiet and simple because I do a lot of fast off-road off driving. And the more stuff you bolt onto anything, whether it's outside or inside the truck, the kind of driving that I do, it just rattles stuff apart. So I and like now, to keep it minimal. Being that it's basically a race car with, you know, <laughs> what, 3.1 inch bypass, is that what you said? Yeah, like just internal, over three internal bypass. Yep. Yeah. Um, there's no clicking or popping out of the shocks. None. You have the hard top. Uh, so really, as long as you have your cargo, you know, Locked tied down. down, the idea is to have no creaks and pops and rattles. Yeah, the Bronco Raptor in its stock form is a silent killer. It, it is ridiculously quiet and it goes over stuff like it's not even there and it's quiet or going over. And, and some people may think it's just a desert, you know, setup, but having the front and rear lockers, it really is a do everything, even, yeah. you know, the four low option in it. And even the $90,000 Jeep 392 has what, 33s or 35 stock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. this thing comes 37, comes 37 tires So stock. out of the gate, you might actually be better off off-roading on the rock crawl trails with this than the Jeep. Just 100%. because of being able to get up and over obstacles that are a little bit taller. Yep. Um, still has a small tow capacity in it, right? 5,000 pounds. 5,000 pounds. It's the most that you can get for any Bronco. Okay. So that three liter twin turbo with all that torque definitely helps out with that. And a 10 speed transmission, as you said. Yes, yeah. 10 speed. It's got the, uh, I'm not sure what transfer case it has, but it's a selectable. So, and, and it's uh, got a Dana 50 rear. And this a Dana is driving in two wheel drive, you know, in normal, normal yes, driving, right? Yeah. Yep. And Dana 50 year, a little rear end, a little bit bigger ring and pinion. Yeah, the 50 rear end, it's got a little bigger ring and pinion face for the extra horsepower and the bigger tires. The front comes with the stock uh, Advantech 44, which is the upgrade for the Bronco that you can get from Dana. 
and uh, this comes with it factory. Oh, so a regular Bronco does not have the 44. They have a smaller size. No, they do have the 44. They don't have the Advan Tech 44. Gotcha. So there's a difference in the way that they make those. I'm actually not even quite 100% sure what the difference is, but okay. it's supposedly an upgrade for the 44 to get the Advan Tech from Dana, and this has it factory. And is the rear end bigger in this than in the regular Bronco? Yeah, the regular Bronco is a 44. Okay, so the 50 option makes it bigger for yeah. the horsepower and, offer, and the tire size. They offer a 60 now for the Bronco, but it's stock width. So it's actually sh narrower than this. And axle. you don't happen to know what size the rear axle shafts are, do you? I don't. Yeah. No. Okay. Well. But it's a six on one thirty five bolt pattern. I'll tell you how I figure that one out. So that's not the regular six on five and a half. No, they changed it, and I got wheels for. Oh, six because on five the other half. Bronco is six on five and a half. Yeah. So it's actually a different. The entire running is that gear. Bigger or smaller? It's technically bigger. No, smaller. Smaller. Six on one thirty nine. Yeah. Yeah, the crazy thing that actually threw me for a loop was I, I realized, you know, the Bronco is built on a Ranger platform. Yes. That's basically what it was. Yeah, and that's what everybody talked about. This yeah. is the Ranger platform. Right, yeah. but the Bron Bronco Raptor, the running gear, everything, the front rear axles, all that, it's based on an F-150 Raptor. Okay. So it's a six on 139, or sorry, it's, so it's a six on 135, and if you get an F-150 wheel, it bolts right onto this. So gotcha. I bought a set of KMC bead locks and spent a whole weekend putting those together and then putting the oh. power tank uh, monster valves in and those you went and getting to put them on. custom powder coated. Oh. That was probably the first guy to ever modify the wheels on a Bronco Raptor. When I went to go put them on them, I'm like, something's wrong here. And Brutal. sure enough, I found out I, that, the, I guess Jerry Zayden from Cambrick had the same problem. But uh, yeah, we were the early guys to find out that these are not six on five and a half. So difference to stand out, bigger engine, um, more horsepower, wider track, yep. uh, stronger front and rear axles, travel, um, tons of travel, yeah. factory 37 inch yeah. tires, still with a good tow capacity. Um, anything else I'm missing on the upgrade from the Bronco? Oh, the, the live valving, yeah. bigger, you know, internal bypass Fox shocks. It's ba that's basically it. I mean, the, the biggest things that you really can't do to this vehicle that you, you know, you can't take a Bronco and turn it into a Raptor because of the engine because of the suspen or the suspension with the live valve, you can't really add that. Yeah. So those are the things that no matter how much money you dump into a Bronco. Into your regular Bronco, you'll never, you'll never get, get this. You'll never get this. Yeah. And you know, for the price point of you know, around $90,000, you would never be able to even come close to upgrading a $60,000 Bronco no, into this. Never. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you're buying a Bronco, just go ahead and buy the Bronco Raptor right out of the gate yeah. because you will not be disappointed. If you want to do a lot of off-roading and you want a vehicle that is like the pinnacle of performance right out of the gate, Bronco Raptor is the vehicle for you. And it's worth every bit of that because you could, like I said, you could spend $100,000 like some of those vehicles that build, you know, the companies that build these Broncos and you still won't have some of the things that this has got. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you yeah. for showing us your uh, Bronco Raptor. Thank you guys. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And Go buy one if you want to go fast in the desert. Yep. And for me, it's a no no brainer. Yeah. You know, this is what I wanted. You right. know, but I, I'd have to tell you, I am a little jealous of yours, and I, <laughs> I wouldn't mind having both of them. <laughs>